great, because he's good, because he's mighty, and because he is certainly powerful. You know, the Lord impressed upon me to to talk about this particular meditation, and it seemed that, you know, at some point we had spoke about it before. Good morning to you, Rosemary. Felicia, good morning to you. God bless you. Brother Larry, good morning. But it seemed that the Lord wanted me to, to mention this to all of you, that there are things that, my God, um, that the Lord can do for us, that we cannot do for ourselves. But the thing about it is sometimes we think that, um, you know, the small things, maybe we can handle those things. But listen, the Lord wants us to know that we got to give everything over to him, turn it all over to him, because he is the one that's going to work out every situation on our behalf. He's the one that's going to bring things to, to pass for us. I see you, Sister Nora. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to pray, Sister Nora, on behalf of you, your family, for the loss. And listen, we um, certainly give our condolences to you, but you know, and as God has already shared with you, he doesn't make any mistakes. So we bless God for how he's going to heal your family, give you comfort and peace through this difficult time. Yes, Lord. Um, so we understand, you know, that that all of us face some times of despair, even now, face some times of desperation. We face times of difficulty. But the thing about it is not about the difficulties that we face. We got to understand it. Life is not, you know, life can be made up of difficulties. It can be made up, lay Lucretia, of, of, of issues. Good morning to you, Sister Nancy. Belinda, good morning to you. But it's not about that. It's not about the difficulties that we face. What life is about as a, as a child of God, Sister Nimi, that's right. It's about knowing that God can solve every situation and every problem that we have. And no matter what you have, no matter how much you have, no matter how much you think that you can do, no matter who you think you are, no matter, you know, you may think, you know, I've run out. You may think that I don't have enough or I'm not enough. I'm not the right person. Or you may think all of that. But it isn't about what you think. It's about what God thinks of you and about what God can do in your life. It's about the promises that God has made to each and every one of us that lets us know that he will deliver us through all of our trials. And I'm telling you, people of God, it's about time that we turn to God. We turn to God during difficult times because the Lord is saying to you, whatever you have, give it to me. I can work with that. Whatever you are, give that thing to me. I can work with that. He's saying whatever you can do, it may, does not have to be a great big thing. It doesn't have to compare to anybody else. You don't have to get on the live and speak like Pastor Tina and allow the Lord to speak through you like Pastor Tina because it's not my words. He said, but whatever you can do, he said, you do that. He said, I'm going to take that thing and I can work with that. He said, I can work with it. I can work with it. And then he began to share with me in the Bible. Listen to me, people of God. And I want you to share because I, because I, I began to think about the things Yes, yes, yes. Think about the things. I see you, Brother Otis, your sister Mary on a ventilator. Yes, yes, yes. Y yes, let me just pray right now for, for uh, Brother Otis's sister. My God, we just pray to the Lord, my God. We know that it's the Lord. It's the reason that we move and we breathe is because of God. It's because of him. So right now we pray for healing. We pray that her lungs open, my God, and function as the Lord desires for them to function in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that God will bring her body back into divine order according to his will and according to his word. Because we know, but the Bible says, listen, that when he died on the tree, he saved us from sin, from sickness, from poverty, from an early spiritual death. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that he would, that we all be saved. And he would, as a matter of fact, that we be in health and prosper as our soul does prosper. So I speak health and healing, my God, over your sister Mary and I know that God's going to do a great and mighty thing and all the people of God listen that are on this line come on we pray in agreement my God because the Bible says when we ask anything according to his will he hears us and not only does he hear us when two or three of us come together gathered in his name touching and agreeing on anything that we can ask what we will and he will do it for us so we're asking for healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus the Lord will do what it is that he said that he will do in Jesus name amen good morning to you sister Karen God bless you God bless you and things such as that, whatever you have, if you have a little bit of prayer, give it to God. If you have a few friends, give those to God. Allow God to work the situation out. And no matter what it is that we're facing, no matter what it is that we're facing, we know that we can come out on top. We, we may be facing decreases in um, our income. We may be facing decreases in, uh, listen, even loved ones. We may be facing relationship issues, but God can bring those things out. And he began, listen, to share with me, as I was saying, share with me uh, situations in the word of God 
where he is saying, I got this. I got it. May you may think that it was um, a situation that it was done and over with, but he's saying, You got it. He said, Give it to me. I got it. He said, If you all can think of a story in the, in the Bible, just write it down. But there's one found in John, I have plenty of them, but there's one found in John chapter 6, verses 8 through 9. And you know this passage of scripture where the Lord fed the 5,000. He just fed the 5,000. Women and children, they weren't even counted. The Bible says one of his disciples, Andrew, in, in verse number 8, Simon Peter's brother said to him, The Lord, here is a boy with five barley loaves and, and two small fish. But what difference will these make among many? What difference will these make among so many? He's asking the Lord. He said, Lord, I got some, some food, a little bit, but I know we got to feed 5,000. And the Lord said to him, have the people sit down. He said, have them sit down. He said, there was plenty of grass in that place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. And I can hear the Lord saying to Andrew, I can hear him saying, I can work with that. If you just give me, give me the, give me the, the five loaves of bread and give me those two small fish, I can hear him saying, I can work with that. And you know the end of that story. He fed those 5,000 men, not including women and children. And there were baskets of food left over. He says, whatever it is that you have. Listen, there was a, there was another story. You know, I, re I recall, um, um, Moses, Mo you know, you all don't know. I have a, I have a little stutter. Just I have a little speech impediment. It's kind of like Moses. The Lord was saying here. Moses was saying to the Lord, Lord, um, he said, I have never been eloquent. This is found in Exodus chapter four, verses ten through eleven. He says, I have never been eloquent. He said, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. He said, for I am slow of speech and tongue. And you all know the great things that Moses had done. Now, Moses messed up at the end, but you know how he led the children of Israel. But the Lord said to him, he said, who gave man his mouth? This is in Exodus chapter four. Yeah. He said, who gave man his mouth or who makes the mute or the deaf, the sighted or the blind? Is it not the Lord? The Lord is saying, I, I've given that to you. However you talk, however you speak, whatever you know, the Lord is saying, listen, if you can see, if you can hear, the Lord says, I'm the one that gave that to you. He says, matter of fact, I know all about it. The Lord is saying, listen, whatever you have, however you can speak, if I've called you to do a thing, he says, I've equipped you, I've qualified you to do that thing. I can hear the Lord saying, just give me your voice. Hey, I can work with that. Give me your voice. I can work with that. Come on and hear somebody. So he said to, to Andrew, give me your resources. I can multiply that. Give me the little bit of money that you have. I can magnify that. I can grow that. He said to Moses, give me your voice. I need for you to speak for me. He said, I can work with that. You know, there's another woman. There's a woman that's in, in First Kings. I talk about her a lot. Chapter 7. And she was the woman who um, attended to Elijah. God sent Elijah to her home because he wanted to work a miracle in her life. He wanted her to know that even though she had a little, if she trusted God with that little, the Lord was going to make a great thing happen in her life. And many times, somebody said it earlier, we don't trust God, but the Lord just wants us to trust him. The prophet Elijah went to the woman's house and he said, listen, I've been sent here by the Lord. I just need something to eat. I need something to eat. Oh, verse number 11 says that as she was going to get it, he called to her and he said, bring me a piece of bread. And she said, as surely as the Lord, your God lives. She said, I have no bread. <laughs> Can y'all see what the Lord is saying? You, the Lord is thinking it right now. Do you see it? She's saying, I have no bread. What is it that you think you don't have? That the Lord is saying, you do. Just, it's in your house. Go find it. Get, just give it to him. <laughs> yes, Sister Donna, he can work with that. She said, I have no bread. She says, what I have though, she says, all I have is a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. 
And she says, look, I'm gathering a couple of sticks to take home and prepare a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. My God, 13, she said, do not be afraid. Elijah said to her, go and do as you have said. He said, but make me a small cake of bread from what you have and then bring it out to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. I can hear the Lord saying to, to her, I can work with that. If you just got a little bit of meal, a little bit of oil, now you got some sticks that you're getting ready to make a fire with. He says, I can work with that. I can, oh, come on in here, somebody. He says, I can work with a little bit of zeal. I can work with a little bit of excitement. I can work with a little bit of enthusiasm to do what it is that God wants for you to do. He says, I can work with a little bit. He said, you're getting ready to make a fire. You got some sticks. So you're going to make a fire. Sometimes, listen, we know we don't think that a little bit of excitement for the Lord is going to take us a long way. But the Lord is saying, listen, if you can just love me, if you can just trust me, he says, I can work with that. He says, I can take your little bit, my God, and I can make it much. And you know the end of that story. The end of that story was because that was a time of famine. The end of that story was, my God, that the Lord made it so her meal and her oil didn't run out. Until the famine was over. My God, the next three years, she had meal and she had oil because she trusted God. Give it to him. I don't know what it is that you're holding back from the Lord. I don't know what it is today, this morning, that you are holding back because you think it's not enough. I don't know what it is that you're holding back because you think that you can't do it. You think, my God, that somebody's not going to accept it. But the Lord, my God, is saying, give it to me. Give, oh, yes, the widow's might. He said, I can work with that. that. Oh my God, that one thing. It was more, the Bible talked about it being more. She gave more than any of the rest of them because they had riches untold. My God, they had it. But she gave all that she had. And the Lord is saying, I can work with that. I'm looking at a story now in Judges chapter seven. I want you all to get this in your mind. You think, my God, you've, you've stopped doing something. You've, you've not continued what God told you to do. You've not accomplished the mission because you thought you didn't have enough. And the Lord is saying to you, just give me what you have. He said, give, he said I can work with that. I can work with your voice. I can work with your $5. I can work, my God, with the, the two paragraphs on your sentence. On the, on the two paragraphs on the paper to make the book. He says, I can work with that. He says, matter of fact, I can work with a thought. I can work with the thought is what he's saying. Judges chapter seven. Oh my God. Judges chapter seven. This is a story about Gideon. And we know Gideon had this big army that the Lord had promised that he was going to deliver Gideon. I see you, Soror Center. The Lord, yo, oh my God, yes. Whatever it is. He said, listen, don't think it's small. My God. The Bible says, don't despise small beginnings. If you give that thing over to God, he says, I'm going to make that thing big. He said, and what you thought was going to happen, he said, listen, I'm, I'm doing greater than that. Because the Bible says he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. According to the power that works, not in him, but in you. The power that works in you. Gideon, you know, had a big army. That's found in Judges chapter 7. He had a big army. But the Lord said to him, you have too many men to deliver Midian into their hands in order that Israel may not boast against me that her strength has saved her. Announce now to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 10,000 remained. We know this story. The army was just too big to give God glory. Sometimes when we have a lot, <laughs> we have a lot, you know, we have these great big jobs. We have these great big positions. We have great big reputations. We feel like we've done it. We feel like we've arrived. I, I think about Paul often. Paul said, listen, I haven't made it. But as great a, a preacher, as great an apostle as Paul was, Paul always said, listen, I'm not there. I've not made it. I don't want anybody to think that I think that I've, I'm the, all that in a bag of chips. He said, because I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to know more. But, but the Lord said to Gideon, listen, I don't want y'all to think that you did this on your own. I don't want you to think, my God, that you didn't need me to win this battle. God said, listen, that's too many. And sometimes we have too much, come on, people of God, too much money in our bank. We got too much going on. 
because we won't give God glory. He went down to 10,000 men. Listen, so we had to understand that even in, even in Gideon's case, the Lord was saying, listen, I need to direct you. I need to be the one to let you know what to do in these times of trial, in these times of, of struggle, these times of challenge. And, and Gideon had to obey God, even though he may not have understood. He may not have understood the reason that God was asking him to do this thing. Gideon had to obey God. Many of us, God may ask us to do a thing and you say, God, really? Do you really want me to do that? And we question God's authority. We question his power. We question his sovereignty. But just like he said, he's the one that made us. He made our mouths. He, he just told you know, Job, why are you questioning me? I'm the one that flung the, the moon in the sky, the stars around the sun. He said, I did that. And oftentimes we question God without having obedience. But, but my God, it, but, but Gideon had to obey God. He had to obey him. And God was saying to Gideon, you got too many men. It's too many. And even as he got down to, to the 10,000, the Lord was saying to Gideon, it's still too many. There are still too many. Because in verse number four of chapter seven, he says, the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many. You still got too much because you still going to think that if you overtake them, that you did it on your own. He said, take them down to the water. He says, I will sift them there for you. He says, I'm going to get the ones that I need. He said, I want to, the Lord is saying, I can hear the Lord saying, I want to get the ones that I can work with. I can't work with all of them. I just want to, I want to get the ones that I can work with. He says, I'm going to sift them there. He says, if I say this one shall go with you, then he shall go. He says, but if I say this one shall not go, the, the, he says, they shall not go. Oh, you better read Judges chapter seven. God instructed Gideon to take the army down to the water. My God, and the Lord sifted them. Listen, it was too many. It was too many. We have to have faith to know that God's going to do exactly what he says he's going to do. We've got to know that God, my God, he's going to work the situation out on our behalf. And you know, the, you know the end of this story. God separated the, the lappers, the one that lapped the water for the battle. Those, he said, listen, now I can work with them. I can work with people who are alert. Come on in here, somebody. He said, I can work with people who are attentive. I can work with people, my God, who are obedient. I can work with these people. I can, I can work with this. Gideon's army, you know the story, got down to 300. And the Lord says, now, now, now I will deliver you. I will deliver you. That's found in, in verse number seven. Of Judges chapter 7, the Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hand. Oh my God. Midianite armies was about 135,000 men. But with the 300 men, the Lord said, I can work with them. These I can work with. What can the Lord work with that you have? That he can deliver you from the hand of this, the enemy, from Satan's trap. What is it that you have that the Lord, that you can give to him right now? Oh my God, that he can work with and bring you out. The Lord will send. He knows, he knows what you have. He does. He knows it. And many of us, listen, many of us are in, I mean, I'm talking about a place of desperation. But the Lord is saying, give me what you have. Give it to me. He said, maybe your, maybe your marriage is, is messed up. Maybe the relationships that you have are messed up and you're saying to the Lord, Lord, there's nothing else that can be done. He said, just give me that little bitty spark of love that maybe you have, or maybe that your husband, your, your wife, your spouse has. He says, give that to me. He says, because I can work. He says, if there's just a little bit a spark, he says, I can work with that. My God, maybe you feeling like your health is just, is just down and you can't get out of this situation. You can't get away from this illness, this ailment that seems to try to overtake you. But the Lord is saying, you got some faith. Give me that. He said, you can have faith as of a size of a mustard seed. You can ask what you will. He said, it can be done for you. He said, just give me. He said, give it to me. He said, I can work with that. I can work with it. We know sometimes, listen, in this time of pandemic that we're in, there are many, my God, that are facing um, food insecurities. Maybe you're having some problems with income, but the Lord says, what do you have? What do you have that I can show you how to multiply it? What do you have? Maybe my God, you are 
spiritually bankrupt. <laughs> Seems like you can't get out of this place that you're in. The Lord is saying, give me, come on, if you can, he said, if you can just read the word of God, he said, if you can just get on a Zoom, if you can get on a Facebook Live, he said, give me that, give, he said, give me your attention. If you can give me your attention, he said, I can work with that. He said, because I'm going to be able to pour into you like never before. If you can just give me your attention, the Lord is saying, I'll turn your heart back to me. Give me your attention, my God. I'll turn things around on your behalf. He says, listen, it's a turnaround time in your life where you got to realize, my God, that God can do more with what you have than what you can do with it. God has a plan for your problem. He has a plan. My God. And we know that because the Bible says that if we can submit to God. We can cast our cares on him. He will take care of us. He will take care of what is trying to overtake us. But we got to give it over to him. If, if we give everything that we have to God, we'll be able to respond no matter what it is that we, uh, that we can get in partnership with him. And then he'll say, I can work with that. I can work with, listen, we don't got to be super men. We don't got to be super women. We don't have to be any of that. We don't, none of that. A lot of things, you know, we we become, and I think I've talked about this before. We become teachers, we become lawyers, we become doctors, we become nurses, we become chefs, we become referees, we become all sorts of things. But God knows our problems and he's able to handle them all. He's able to handle it. Whatever you have, give it to God. Trust him that he can work it out. Don't hold it. Don't keep it, my God. Don't, don't keep it. Don't moan and weep and cry about it. Give it over to him because I'm telling you, he can work it out. Because there's a, there's a, there's a problem, listen, there's problems that are continue to mount in our lives. But you got to know when you turn it over to God, when you trust him, pray, praying in faith that God's going to work the situation out in your life. Just like I showed you in all of the, the stories in the Bible. Those are not just stories in the Bible. Those are your stories. It's your story. Sister Donna, it's your story. Everybody, my God, we go through situations and we come to a point in our time and in our lives where we, it's like we, we, we reach the end of our rope and we say, God, somebody's got to help me. Just like the woman in Kings. And she said, somebody's got to help me. But my God, the Lord is saying, I will help you. He says, I'm here to help you. I'm here to give you the things that you need. He said, just give me what you have. He says, well, listen, when you're so tired, you can't, you can't even think of nothing else to do. The Lord says, give me what you have. He says, give me that last bit of strength that you have. He says, I will strengthen you. I'll strengthen your body. I'll strengthen your mind. I'll strengthen your spirit. I will strengthen you. What do you need? My God, what do you need from the Lord? There are many of us that need many things. We need healing. We need spiritual healing. We need financial uh, breakthrough. We need uh, uh, physical healing and spiritual healing. We need relationships mended. We need doors to be opened. What do you need from the Lord? What do you need? And then you have to ask, what do you have? What do you have? You have more than you think you have. But when you give it to God, it is more than enough. Because the Lord is saying, my God, I can work with that. I can work with that. Come on, that ought to be our, 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 our saying for the day. I can work with that. When you think you're not enough, when you think you don't have enough, when you think you've not done enough. I can hear the Spirit of God speaking through Elijah saying, I can work with that. Whatever you have, you got oil, you got meal, you got a fish, you got some bread, you got some energy, you got attention, you got some resources, you got some money. Come on, you've got you've got some uh, influence. Oh, come on in here, somebody. You got your, you've got a mouth to talk. You come on, you got a hand to write. He said, "I've got, I can work with that." God wants you to begin to start putting that plan, your plan, into action. Ah, I said it the other Sunday. God wants us to begin to start executing, execute, execute what it is that he's given to us to execute. 
not holding back, not thinking because we're waiting on something to happen or waiting for us to get some execute. Hear the Lord saying, I can work with that. What do you have? What do you have? What do you need? And what do you have? I can work with that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father God, we just bless your name. We praise you, oh God, for just working in our lives, oh Lord God, and, and God expanding our faith to let us know, Lord God, that it isn't about what we can do for ourselves, Lord, but mostly, God, what you can do for us. There may be situations, God, that are in our lives, God, that we feel like we've not enough or we've not done enough or we don't have enough. But Lord God, just like you took the army of, of Gideon from 32,000 down to 300, and Lord God, they were able to defeat the army, God, of 135,000. Lord God, you were able, God, to do that very same thing in our life. Lord God, when you fed the 5,000, I can thank you. Thank you, Lord God, that I, I can hear you when, you when you lifted up that bread, oh Lord God. And you can say, I can work with this, Lord. Father, I can work with this. Now he fed those 5,000. I thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, you are never short of your word. And whatever promise that you made to us, oh God, it is true. The things, God, that we think, God, are not the things that you know. And because of that, oh Lord God, we will trust you for every good and perfect thing that comes, God, our way. We thank you, Lord God, for how you continue to give us the provision that we need. We thank you, Lord, for how you continue, God, to give us the lessons that we need to help to increase our faith, oh Lord God. Help us increase our faith, Lord God. And Lord, even God, when we are not sure of a thing, Lord, let us, God, trust you enough to be obedient to your word, to do what it is that you will say, Lord God, that Lord, even if we have a few dollars, God, that you will multiply our seed, Lord God, that you will prosper us, oh Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that, that even God, if we have a mouth, God, to give God praise, Lord God, that we will not close our mouths, God, but we will open our mouths, God, and praise you, oh Lord God. And Lord, even if we got hands to move, God, and lift God to you, Lord God, that we will do that in worship, oh God. If we have a heart, God, and I know we do, God, to lift you up, Lord God. Get out of our God, pr place of pride, God. I got into a place of humility, Lord God. Lord, you can work with that. You can't work with a heart of stone, but you can work, God, surely work, God, with a heart that is, that is, uh, God, and submit it to you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we, God, give you our life. We give it over to you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God, just for who you are. And I thank you, Lord God, the things that we have in our mind and our heart. Lord, we give that stuff over to you. We give it over to you, Lord God, that you will bring us out of a place of poverty, bring us out of a place of despair, Lord God, out of a place, God, of unforgiveness, out of a place, God, of meanness, God, but into a place, God, of prosperity, God, into a place, God, of joy and peace, God, in the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord God. For the things, God, that we can give today that you can work with. I thank you that there is no limit, Lord God, on what you can do. No limit on your provision. No limit on your power. No limit, God, on your presence. No limit, God, on the promises that you have. We thank you, Lord God, that you are great and you are mighty, God. That you are big in our lives, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for the ability, God, that you show us. Because you are able. You are able, God, to do, God, so much more than we know. So much more than we can imagine. If we give you the opportunity, Lord God, today, God, we give you the opportunity. We give you the vessels, oh God. We thank you, Lord God. We give you the vessels, even God, for the woman, God, that had the, the oil, God, that she was, God, had to go and borrow from her neighbors. She had the vessel, God. She had the little bit of oil. God, you said, I can work with that. I can work with that. Come on, today, have you, if you've decided, Lord, that, I, that you're just done, you're not going to do it anymore. I want you to bring it all to God. Give him what you have. Bring your praise. Bring your voice. Bring your worship. Bring your heart. Bring your mouth. Bring your hands. Bring your life. Bring your resources. Bring it all to God. And let him overwhelm you with what he can do. Because I can hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I can work with that. Thank you, Lord God, for working with what we have. We give it to you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Use it. Use it, God. However you choose, thank you for working with it, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Give it to him. Give it to him, people of God. Let him know that you know that he can work with that. Oh, glory to God. This is the people of God. I got some pearls on. I'm getting ready for tomorrow. I'm getting ready for tomorrow. Wear your pearls. We are wearing our pearls, ladies. Husbands, let your wives, go get your wives some pearls if they don't have none already. Go get them some so they can wear them tomorrow. We're wearing pearls for inauguration um, just to let, let um, symbolically let Kamala Harris know that we are with her. Get your pearls. Go get some. Brother Otis, go, go get her some pearls if she doesn't have any. Larry, get her some pearls if she don't have any. 
Get them, get some pearls. And let us commemorate the great historical thing that will happen on tomorrow. We know that the Lord will take care of them. I bless God. Let me just pray. I just bless God for his protection over the president-elect and vice president-elect tomorrow as they show the world how powerful our voice is because it is our voice that allowed them to be in the place that they are in. We thank God that he's going to watch over them, protect them, protect the troops. And then to, to even look at the minds of those who, who to set out to do things against them. I thank you, Lord God, that there is no weapon formed against them that shall prosper. We bless you, Lord God, for what you're going to do even tomorrow for this historical day. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, Belinda, get you some pearl earrings too. Pearl it down, girl, pearl it down. We'll see you tomorrow. I love you all with the love of Jesus. You go in peace.